In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform a Kruskal Wallace analysis in SPSS. The example data set consists of a rated liking dependent variable, because this is the vegetables and children study, where the children rated the vegetables on a three point scale from yucky, just okay, to yummy. And there were four groups in the analysis, a control group that didn't get any exposure to vegetables, at least at school in the, in the experiment, and two exposure plus tangible rewards, which were stickers, and exposure plus praise, and finally, the group that only received the vegetables on a regular basis, but no praise and no rewards. Now to conduct a Kruskal-Wallis analysis, click on Analyze, Non-Parametric Tests, Legacy Dialogues, and K-Independent Samples. Put the rated liking variable in the test variable list and the group in the grouping variable. And now you have to define the range in the analysis. And in this case, there are four groups ranging from one to four. So I have to define that in this window here, one to four, click Continue. And Kruskal-Wallace is the default and you can keep that selected. Click on OK. And the analysis is performed. And we can see that the mean ranks are reported. And you can adjust this table so that it's all, the rows are all in the same width. And we can see the control group has a mean rank of 155, which suggests that they scored lower than the exposure only group, which was the next highest group, 210. And exposure plus praise, 241.97 is their mean ranking and exposure plus tangible is 243. So those are mean ranks based on transforming the liking variable into ranks, just like the men with knee who would be conducted. Now the test statistic, which tests the hypothesis that these mean ranks are equal to each other, is tested with the chi-square statistic, and that's equal to 52.13. And with three degrees of freedom, the p-value is less than 0 0.05. In fact, it's less than 0 0.001. And consequently, the null hypothesis of equal mean ranks has been rejected. There is at least one mean rank that is statistically significantly different from another mean rank amongst these four means. And of course, that means we have to follow up the analysis with a series of multiple comparisons. Before doing so, though, you can calculate the effect size associated with this omnibus chi-square analysis. And you can do so by estimating eta squared. And in the textbook, that's described as the chi-square value divided by n minus 1. Now, in this case, the total sample size is equal to 422. So you need to divide the chi-square value by 422 minus 1, which is 421. So 52.131 divided by 421 equals 0.124 rounded. Therefore, we can say that 12 0.4% of the variability in the ranks was accounted for by the group independent variable, which would be considered a fairly large effect size. Now, we don't again know where the mean comparisons were statistically significant, and so some follow up analyses need to be conducted, and they need to be conducted in such a way that some correction for family wise increase error is managed. 